So we're at a really nice point in the refit now. The, when we started, there were a lot of jobs which were kind of taking multiple days to get done, like um, the teak decks take days and days and days. And the top of the cabin, stripping all the old non-skid off took a long time. But now we're at a point where loads of big things are done and then we're getting like three or four jobs done in a day. So she's coming together really, really quickly, which is really nice. What have we got? Um, our new great big Manson Supreme. We had one on Kitwake and it always works really well, so we've got another one. Jesus. <laughs> Small. <laughs> the beast. How many kilos is it? Um, 27. I'm glad I'm not pulling this one up by hand. Yeah. Thank God we've got a manual windlass now. so thick. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks guys at Manson. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be worse to be honest. Yeah. Can we put a little screw through there? Mm. Oh no, it's supposed to be one. I'll take that if I can get So this is probably the worst bit of teak left on the boat. Um, it's got a lot of sort of grime and um, it's not too rotten, like it's still fairly solid, but it's got a lot of mould growing on it basically where it's just been sat there probably for 40 years. So we're just going to clean it up a bit and then try using some oxalic acid, which is like a teak or wood, I should say, cleaner and brightener. We haven't really used it and before I use it all over the decks and stuff, I'd rather use it on this because then at least I kind of get used to using it. Um, it's a bit more inconspicuous. So I'm just going to clean it up quick and then use that. So I just wanted to check in and give you guys a reality check a little bit because inevitably when we are recording we're in a good mood or we are trying to explain stuff to you about what we're doing and so we're just having like some technical chats in front of the camera and things like that but I guess that takes away from some of the realities of doing a boat refit on a budget and upgrading boats so I just wanted to open up and talk about the things that we can't really capture on camera like um, a bit of bickering or feeling really stressed out we bought the boat at the beginning of November and it's now March and we're very close to seeing the end uh, so I can see the light at the end of the tunnel but it's not been a very easy five months it's been quite challenging i have to be honest um which we knew it would be but i guess once you're in it you realize ooh, 
God, what have I done? <laughs> we are definitely confident that everything we've done, both in terms of upgrading the boat and the works that we've done, are going to be super worth it once we get cruising. But over the past five months, we've had some tough times. For example, we moved onto the boat without having the full amount of cash needed to restore it. So that meant that I couldn't really help out Ryan doing the refit much. I had to just constantly try to earn money and that was my main focus for quite a few months. I just constantly had the stress of, oh, if I can't make the money, we can't do the next project. So I just had to sort of quickly turn over work and try and find new work and stuff like that. And uh, that was fairly stressful because obviously the sailing season in the Med is very short. So maybe April until October. And we really wanted to get going in April because otherwise we're going to miss out on the wind. Most of the wind is in the middle seasons and probably on having like empty anchorages, which is the best time of year. Ryan on the other side, he had to do a lot of the work by himself and having such little time, so about five months to do all the work that we've been doing meant really not taking any days off to sort of rest from work or boat work. And that slowly sort of brought up a lot of stress and um, I guess tiredness make you makes you a little bit grumpy sometimes and um, we've had plenty of that I think <laughs> yeah and on top of, of it all obviously we had the wedding to plan and that's on a budget as well and yeah it was a bit much and I'm sure that we'll we won't regret having done everything and um, all the upgrades and all the planning and everything else but I cannot lie it was hard and we've had some really bad times um, just wanted to be honest and let you know it's not all been super you know easy and happy and uh, wow what a great adventure um, it's not always like that and I'm hoping that we can make the most of this season to make up for the Let's see, tougher times we had in the winter. We got our new dinghy delivered. It's a Zodiac, it's a small rib. The previous owner's dinghy was left out and was sort of falling apart uh, so we couldn't really use that and uh, Zodiac were so nice to uh, give us this uh, lovely rib uh, which uh, will hopefully mean that we can now go on uh, freediving and uh, snorkeling adventures on the dinghy uh, that's something that we couldn't really do on Marika and we're gonna go call her Barnacle I think it's quite cute and she's quite small but uh, big enough for our needs and uh, yeah I think it suits her. What dinghy is it? Uh, it's a Cadet Aluminium 240. It's amazing and it feels like Christmas. Thank you. 
we just wanted to update you on how much we spent on our refit for SCUA. Our initial budget was set at £3,000 and it had a list of jobs that we intended to do. So all the works that we had planned to do, we managed to stay within budget, so to stay within our 3K. But of course, just like with every refit and every new to you boat, um, there were things that we didn't expect and so for those things we had to budget an extra amount. Our initial budget of three grand included all of the tools that we needed to do the works. So for example, the sander and the drill. And all of these tools came at about 400 pounds. Uh, all the gear to redo the toggles and the rigging, which costed 300 pounds. The sealant to recork the decks, the teak plugs and uh, all of the deck sort of uh, materials. Uh, was 200 pounds. The sewing machine, as we said, was 130 euros, and the fabric to recover the cushions was around 90 euros uh, bought in IKEA. All of the paints that we used to do the cabin top and the top sides came at around 200 pounds. The wood skin and uh, anything that we used to apply it came at about 80 pounds. The engine spares, including the servicing bits and the new exhaust elbow, came at around £500. We got new batteries for £700 and our solar system for £250. So all of that added together with all the other small bits that we needed, like LED lights, new bedding and everything else, came at £3,000. Some of the gear that we needed we were lucky enough to get promotional deals for and that includes the dinghy, the Yankee and the Anka. We were also lucky enough to have a free composting loo because the previous owner had bought it and not got round to installing it. However, there were also some unforeseen um, things to fix or upgrades to be made that we didn't really think about before moving on board. So for example, we found out that the Samsung posts were rotten to the core, so we had to replace them. Uh, the same goes for the canvas, as you've seen in the previous episodes, it was just in terrible condition, so we had to replace it. And the same goes for the outboard, the one that was on board didn't really start, so we had to buy one. So all of these extra bits um, we had to pay for as well, and that came at around £2,000. So five thousand pounds total for our refit. We decided to get rid of the SSB radio that was on board because the radio license for it was so expensive in itself and it had to be taken in the UK over various uh, weeks and that made it absolutely cost prohibitive for us. So we sold it for around 700 pounds and now we're gonna put that money towards a satellite phone whenever we're ready to pro go properly offshore. How were we able to afford this refit? So first of all, we didn't have to pay for our slip. The previous owner had paid up until May because he bought a yearly contract. Uh, the second thing we did was to cut our living costs to the bare minimum. So we lived on 400 euros per month. And as you know, I've been working quite a lot to make as much money as possible to pay for the works. So we had part of the three grand before we arrived and then I worked towards getting all of that budget and then once we realized there was more I just accepted more and more work so that we could pay for the rest of it as well. We also made a big effort to shop around for every single thing we bought not even uh, LED bulbs <laughs> we just went for whatever was convenient we ordered everything from different places depending on the prices and our objective is always to get quality materials at the cheapest price and uh, that saved us quite a lot of money. So a tip if you are doing a boat refit like we have where you don't exactly have all the money for it and you're not entirely sure you're going to get the work, we prioritized the works based on what was more urgent. So for example the canvas work I could have repaired it and waited another season maybe. So that was one of the last things that we actually did and bought the materials for and uh, as the refit progressed works with less priority got done and I just kept trying to work towards them. As anyone with a boat knows, boat maintenance and upgrades never end, so there's lots of uh, stuff that we still need to do. 
for example, down below there's uh, lots of cosmetic jobs to be done which aren't urgent on our uh, priority list. And we have also uh, in mind to get a couple of upgrades as soon as we can afford them. So more uh, anchor chain because we don't really have anywhere near enough chain as we'd like to. And we're still deciding what to do about uh, the bottom of the boat. So we're not sure whether to go all out and uh, do a copper coat job or whether to go with uh, normal anti-fouling and just put up with um, whatever the price of hauling out uh, every two years is wherever we'll be cruising. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to support the production of these videos, you can join our Patreon crew and get access to exclusive content. Join us next time as we go for our very first test sale on SCUA.